Hello, my name is John Lauritsen, and I'm the product support engineer here at Avanti for the Avanti Endpoint Security, formerly Heat EMSS system. And in this series of videos, I'll be walking you through the process of migrating from the Avanti Endpoint Security to Avanti Security Controls, also known as ISEC. So before we start the migration process, there's a few things that you want to do in your planning stages. Uh, first of all, we recommend that you plan on installing the Avanti security controls on a new server. You then test your patching capability to make sure that you're able to deploy patches properly. Then you finish getting everything set up. And finally, you decommission, you remove the endpoint security agents, and then you finally decommission or uninstall the endpoint security server. While we do recommend that you install the Avanti security controls on a new server, you can install it on your existing endpoint security server. Uh, this will increase the load on the server as you go through and make the migration process because you will have both systems running at the same time. And it can also result in more of a process in decommissioning the old server as you'll have to remove all the components of endpoint security rather than just decommissioning the physical or virtual server itself. In these demonstrations, we will be installing on a new server. However, we will also discuss the process that will need to be done if you're going to be installing on an existing server in case you need to follow that path. Also, one other recommendation that we have is when you are going through the initial installation and migration process, you test the deployment and scanning and patching of systems on a small subset of systems first to ensure that any unexpected problems are resolved prior to attempting to push it out to your entire organization. This way, we can make sure that there's no major interference with your standard uh, work for your employees or users. Now that we've gone over the planning, as stated before, we'll be installing the Avanti security controls on a new server. So here on my desktop, I've got this uh, Windows Server, in this case, this is a Windows Server 2016 system. And I've got the Avanti security controls that I've downloaded from Avanti.com. So I'm going to go ahead and run that to start the installation process. Now this is the same process that you would follow if you were installing the security controls on your um, endpoint security server as well. So we go through standard accept the license agreement. You can customize the installation and in directory. In this case, uh, we will not be going from the standard, but there's no problem in doing it any other way. Also, for those of you familiar with the endpoint security and the patch caching section of it, we will be able to also customize where that caching of patches happens in security controls as well. And we'll cover that later. And so now we'll go ahead and kick off the install. One thing to note as we're running through this install real quick, uh, there are different prerequisites for Avanti security controls than there are for Avanti endpoint security. So if you are installing this on the same system as your endpoint security server, you will want to either ensure that those prerequisites are already installed or install uh, security controls at a time when you can reboot, reboot the server because there will be times when, uh, depending on which prerequisites are installed, you may need to reboot the server and we don't want to disrupt any other activities that endpoint security might be doing. So now that we've completed the installation, the next step is to connect uh, security controls with the database. So we have two options here. We can create a new database. In this case, it will uh, install SQL Server here on the system and create a new database. Or, as Endpoint Security already runs using a SQL database, 
we can use that same SQL Server to host the database for security controls. So we'll go ahead and we'll be creating a new database. Uh, we'll, we will not be using an existing database because we haven't had security controls on here already. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and you can see here I've got my server with the default UPC SQL instance that's used for endpoint security. So I'm going to select that I want to create a new database there. And then I want this new database to be named the default of security controls. There's no problems with customizing this. And then I'm going to use the default Windows authentication. You can specify a different Windows user or a SQL based authentication. So I've gone through run the test. I've got the account that gives me that access to the SQL server that will allow me to set up the database. And then so I'll go ahead and hit next. And the database has been created. So I go ahead and finish that. I'll wrap up the last bit of the installation. And there we are. So now that we've got the application installed, let's go ahead and launch it. So it's going to go through and do initial checking for uh, new files, new definitions. Okay, so now that I've got Avanti security co controls up and running, we're going to go ahead and activate our license. We do this by going to help enter slash refresh license key. So now in here, I've got some temporary licenses from a trial mode. So I'll go ahead and remove those. I'll take my license key that I've already received. And I'll paste that up into here. And in this case, I've got an online system, so I'll just leave it on the online activation. If you have an offline or a air gap system, you can use the manual process, which the controls activation will walk you through. So we'll go ahead and activate online now. So we've got our key activated. We'll just remove this bad one. All right, and so there we have our Avanti security controls up and running. So as a summary, in this video, we completed the initial installation of Avanti security controls. We set it up on a new server, and then we connected it to a database on an existing SQL server. We have planned out how the rest of our migration is going to go. We're going to proceed with installing on this server while leaving our existing endpoint security server up and running so that we can have a smooth migration without interruption to our patching, monitoring, and deployment process. We'll then go ahead and after we have verified that everything is set up properly for security controls to handle all our patching, we will decommission our endpoint security server.